initiative Hello. and uh, who is leading the initiative at Narcos University. And now we went public and it's my great pleasure to uh, welcome everyone to our session today. Um, please let me know if I need to speak other than English language right now, uh, but probably we'll do a quick introduction in English and then we can switch to Russian or Kazakh at your request. I welcome everyone to the project. Thank you very much for your interest to join a case developing initiative, which is based at Narcos University at Silk Road Case Research Center, uh, which uh, Dr. Anjan Ghosh is leading. And uh, Anjan has been leading the project for several years already. And he already developed several case studies with our students together with our faculty member uh, and deputy dean, uh, Ms. Yelena Krupina. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Yelena today as well. Uh, Yelena has even won uh, together with the co-author, uh, Yulia. They won even a prize from uh, the best case uh, nomination, right? Uh, established by North American Case Research Association. So um, I will quickly uh, give floor to Anjan and Yelena now. Uh, welcome everyone again. And I'm extremely happy to see all my um, old friends here as well as colleagues. Um, so we've been in partnership with many of you and some of you already uh, expressed their willingness to develop case studies. And actually, you are the ones to uh, develop the initiative in Kazakhstan. So I see many, many familiar faces here. Welcome. Thank you very much, Anjan. The floor is yours. And well, thank you, Dilbar. And uh, to the entire audience, I am really happy to see you this evening here. And here we are joined by our, as you have seen in, the, in, in our notification that we are supported by North American Case Research Association. And this morning, <coughs> we are extremely lucky and happy to have uh, two of the office bearers, uh, Michael Goldman and my friend John uh, to be here. Uh, and there has been little change in the schedule because of uh, both John and Michael. They are they need to uh, go to their uh, to their universities' respective places as well. So uh, before I start my session, I would request uh, our guests and partners, both Michael and John, to take the floor and enlighten us on cases and NACRA and the initiatives, and then I'll. Uh, I'll take it from there. Thank you so much. And I welcome once again, all of you. Anjan, thank you. May I interrupt you for a second? And it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Uh, Zoltan Buzadi, who is joining us from Hungary. Zoltan, thank you very much. Uh, so I've already introduced our old friends here. <laughs> uh, Zoltan, thank you indeed for your interest. And it's yes. my... Uh, pleasure to introduce our partners from North American Case Research Association, yes. uh, Dr. Michael Goldman and Dr. John Barlaro, and our professor who is leading the project, Dr. Anjan Ghosh. And Thank probably you. you met Marek before, he is coming from Nazarbayev University, and Marek is already well known in Kazakhstan, uh, researcher and publisher of case studies. Yes, just a few few words. Uh, I wrote also my own case studies in leadership and strategy. I won global awards with that. But uh, related to your prestigious institution, I have to say that I gave workshops on case teaching about four or five years ago. I'm very motivated to uh, continue with this uh, work. I wrote a book chapter on case methods in a, in a very good book, which I'm very happy to share later on with your faculty. And I'm happy to contribute to young talent and supervise them on case writing uh, to share my uh, experience and 
um, the process, on uh, support them in the process. Thank you. Oh, uh, great. Thank you, Zoltan. Now we know where the roots are, because I'm relatively new to Narcos, and we see the roots are with you. So yes. which are being <laughs> uh, continued by Anjan and uh, other colleagues. Yes. Thank you, indeed. All right, uh, John and Michael, the floor is yours. And welcome once again. Great. Uh, thank you, Anjan, and, and thank you, everybody. Um, welcome on behalf of NACRA. My name is John Valaro, the, the Vice President of Programs. And um, it, it's very uh, exciting to be welcoming you. Uh, at this point, I think whatever time zone you're in uh, <laughs> uh, as, as we join. Um, I'm going to give some opening remarks. I'm going to give a brief overview of NACRA. And then I'm going to turn it over to our, our president, Michael Goldman, to, to give some salutations and remarks as well. Um, you know, I, 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 it sounds like we've already got some experienced case authors with us, but you know what's exciting about speaking to all of you right now, uh, it, it, whatever part you are in this journey with, with case, case authorship, is that cases look to bring life into the classroom, right? We're inside four walls. And we want to make sure that whatever we're teaching has life and is meaningful, immediately meaningful to students um, for their own education. And that's what's exciting about being a part of NACRA. Um, being part of NACRA now for the past four or five years, you're around like-minded uh, uh, faculty members who wish to bring the classroom to life through these experiences that are written about and then uh, taught through the case method. And NACR really works to support this uh, through the three methods that you see on this slide. And um, just as, as you're aware, Anjan will be sharing this, this slide with you. It's got information um, <coughs> later. Um, as you can see, uh, Michael is the president of NACRA. And really the way that NACRA uh, has global, go, a global footprint is, is these three ways. Number one, there's the conference that happens in October. There's the Case Research Foundation. Uh, and then there's the Case Research Journal. Um, the, the conference uh, occurs each October. This year, like last year, it will be virtual. Um, so there will be no travel other, uh, other than uh, your locality, whether it be in your home or, or, or going to your office. Um, and there are going to be more uh, communications about that coming through. But uh, the exciting thing about having this virtual is uh, the, the ability for, for, for members uh, like you guys to be able to participate uh, without having that, that burden of travel. And the other thing that's exciting about this, this conference this year uh, having worked with Anjan on this, you'll see that there's a link uh, to the kit, to the calls, and we have uh, uh, tracks in multiple business disciplines as well as languages. And in the past years, we we have and we still have this year a French language track, a Chinese language track, and with Anjan's help, we've inaugurated uh, for this year a Russian language track. Um, and so Anjan will, will can speak more to that. But uh, again, uh, the way NACRA is, is, is growing and looking to support authors is recognizing that it's not just discipline based, but it's also language based. Uh, so we're very excited to be to, to be working on that with you guys. Uh, the next way that NACRA supports uh, authorship, and again, this is especially important for those that are uh, early, uh, early career faculty members is that we offer the, the, uh, the, 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 the Paul R. Lawrence Fellowship through the Case Research Foundation. And again, all these links are, are in the PowerPoint that Anjan is gonna distribute. But for those of you that are early year uh, academics uh, who are looking to attend NACR, you can apply to this fellowship. And the fellowship uh, and the, the Case Research Foundation, uh, next slide if you wish to, to thank you, is chaired by Antti Lawrence. So uh, if you wish to have more information, you can see the link below. Uh, but again, uh, with that fellowship, that's another way that you can attend NACRA. And we have uh, special workshops and well, this year will be webinars devoted to the fellowship uh, recipients. And those are meant to not just uh, support them in the case authorship, but really uh, get them integrated into NACRA and get the support that they would need uh, as, as uh, faculty members who are looking to build uh, their au revoir with, with case writing. Next slide, please. These next two slides are on the case research journal. Uh, we, we publish uh, you can see the name Gina Grandi. She's the editor. We have a, a, the Case Research Journal. Uh, it is a peer-reviewed uh, case uh, journal um, 
for those of you that are, that are looking to publish uh, your cases outside of the classroom, uh, possibly not just in textbooks, but also in, in journals. Uh, it's peer reviewed is one of the top uh, journals. If you go to the next slide, it has information uh, regarding our, our journal. You can see we're, we're, we're rated B plus. Uh, we're rated B plus in the Journal of Management Education. Uh, and we have a very broad distribution. I think what's important to recognize about the case research journal and the cases that are published there is that they're accessible through the Harvard Business Publishing website. So again, for those of you that publish with us, um, or for those of you that have used the Harvard Business Publishing um, interface like I do when I, when I prep my classes, um, it's very important to recognize this, uh, that it is distributed and it's not a uh, 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 limited uh, distribution um, for, 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 um, for those that are looking to have a, a much broader uh, publication footprint. So to that point, um, that's really when, when you look at NACRA, the, the three prongs that we have, and I can't help but, but be remiss if I don't mention this again, that for me, and I think for all of you, what, what you would experience with joining NACRA is the camaraderie. And I think I already felt that when I was joining this webinar with Anjan, uh, the, the, the Dean wel welcoming us. Um, there's already a warmth there and it's very enjoyable to be speaking to you uh, almost fully across the globe at this point, I believe, if I were to, to get my globe out. Um, but again, thank you for joining us um, and, and, and best of luck with this webinar. And I'd like to now turn it over to Michael Goldman, our president of NACRA, uh, for, for his opening remarks. Thank you, John. Thank you, colleagues. Um, I'm uh, delighted to spend a few moments with you. Um, you know, I think what's, uh, what's so important at this time, as the world continues to struggle, as we face these difficulties socially and economically, uh, you know, is to reflect on the important research that we're doing that can make a real impact. Uh, and as John said, what, what case research has shown us is that we're able to make the classroom come alive. But in addition to that, we're able to make our research come alive. Uh, and if we think about real impact and the conversations happening at the uh, AACSB level, at a number of publisher levels, uh, as deans and universities around the world recognize that we need to be doing research that makes a real impact. And what we've seen through the studies is that case research allows faculty to do that. Uh, really for a number of reasons. The first one that I think is so important in the markets in which we operate right now uh, is the closeness to business. The opportunities for faculty, those of us in the room uh, and others, to collaborate closely. We've seen editorial after editorial from the leading journals in our disciplines uh, over the last 18 months talk about the need for faculty to get out of their offices when they're allowed to, get out of their homes when they can, and to collaborate with practice, to collaborate with business. Uh, and so we know case research gives us the opportunity longitudinally with some qualitative good work uh, to do rigorous research with business, to collaborate with protagonists, to go into organizations and understand what's really happening. Michael Porter spoke about this, Clayton Christensen spoke about this, and you've seen numerous editorials from the Journal of Marketing and others over the last few months. Real impact is critical to go beyond citations uh, to really think about what impact our research is having. Uh, so, so number one, I think it's about closeness to business, closeness to organizations, and the opportunity to, to do research together, uh, you know, theory and practice together from day one. So I think that's really important as we think about the case research opportunity. And then similar to, to John's argument, it's about what happens to that research. And, you know, the, the, the San Francisco declaration that you may have heard about in this real research space some years ago spoke about publication being the first step, not the last. That it's not about getting that hit, getting that line on your resume and then leaving the research. But that's the first step. And case research gives us a fabulous model for how publishing can be the first step. Because when you've published your case and your instructor manual in the case research journal and elsewhere, uh, well, then it's about getting used. 
And then it's about collaborating with colleagues around the world uh, to make sure that those cases are used in classrooms, in emerging and developed economy contexts. So real research, real impact, uh, and that's certainly what our community is about. And we're delighted that by extension, you are part of uh, a growing and very vibrant case research, writing and teaching community within the NACRA environment. We may be called the North American Case Research Association, but as you can hear from my accent, I don't sound very North American sometimes, uh, and, and our, you know, our future elected president is from Australia. Uh, and so we are very much a global organization with membership around the world. Uh, I think there were over 30 countries represented at our last conference in October. Uh, and so, you know, our history may be in North America, our reality and our future right now is around the world. And so we're very excited to engage with you and support this and many other initiatives. John spoke about the collegiality, the, the, the warm feeling of coming together virtually and physically within a NACRA environment uh, with other case researchers, writers and teachers. When I think back about my early interactions uh, through the Paul R. Lawrence Fellowship, just like Anjan, an opportunity to come into to NACRA to be recognized for some previous work uh, and to really be given the guidance for, for how to develop great work, is this issue of taking good work and turning it into great work. I thought I knew how to do cases. I thought I knew what case research was about. Uh, and then I went to my first NACRA and I was blown away. Uh, and I think you will find as well as you engage with our, our experts is that they are warm and open and very keen to help all of us take our good work and turn it into great work. Uh, and so that's what's most exciting for me about potential great work coming out of emerging markets. Uh, I, I edit, as you may know, uh, Emerald Publishing's Emerging Market Case Studies Collection. Uh, and I was born in South Africa, uh, and I would do a lot of work in South America. And, and for me, emerging markets are really this critical engine, not just for the world's economy, but for the world's society. <laughs> and we need to understand what's happening in emerging markets, and emerging markets can make such a critical contribution. So more cases about more interesting managers and owner operators and family businesses in emerging markets, I think is critical to educating people from Almaty to New York, to Singapore, to Santiago. Um, that's what management education is about. That is what management's required. I mean, our, our world is struggling in some respects right now, and we need competent and responsible managers, ethical managers, to take some tough decisions. That starts in the classroom, it starts with the case research we do, uh, and the impact is felt when organizations and governments and institutions make good calls for their people. That's what we know the world needs, and, and that's what I know today's conversation is, is going to help us do. So a warm welcome from us. Uh, from officially the North American Case Research Association, but practically from a community of case scholars uh, that are really keen to walk with you on this important journey. All right, thank you, Michael, and thank you, John. I hope you'd it's not too late for you to, <laughs> to uh, start your day. You have already started your day. Uh, coffee is almost getting over for Michael. <laughs> but thank you so much for, uh, for uh, giving us the perspective and welcoming all our valued attendees today uh, to the world of uh, case research, case writing, and case teaching. Now, with the permission of Dilbar, Michael, and John, I would want to start my, uh, start my presentation. And this is not my presentation. This is the presentation from all of us. So at any point in time, if you want to, if you want to 
add anything, please stop me and and uh, and uh, give your thoughts. And this is applicable to each member who are attending this this uh, particular session today. At any point in time, if you want, uh, please stop me and give your thoughts, ask questions. It's more of a a social engagement than somebody who is giving a lecture. Please do not take it like a lecture or something like that. With that, Elena, uh, uh, are you controlling the presentation? Can you please give me the control so that I can share? Oh, thank you, because I change a uh, slide, I guess. Uh, give me a second. Can you see? I hope you can see. So as we as we as we have stated, this is not a presentation or an expert opinion panel from Narhos University or from NACRA. This particular session is all about coming together and trying to see whether we can do something that Central Asia deserves and Central Asia is fertile to do so. Uh, I'm new to Kazakhstan. I have just completed a year. This particular picture I took two weeks ago at the National Museum, which resembles the beautiful Kazakhstan flag, where the sky talks about infinity. I think the whole aspect of case research and the opportunity that Kazakhstan offers is infinite. Every day I take say, steps, and every other time when I interact with an organization, the organization is like the sun, is beautiful. Every organization, trust me, so far I have interacted, whether it's a small organization at the bazaar or a big company. We are going to tell some stories today, but every organization is like a sun, another element of the Kazakhstan flag, which offers a lot of energy and a lot of information. And then we look at ourselves as the third element of the flag, which is the hawk. As hawk or as researchers, we now look at the organization and try to develop the fourth element of Kazakhstan's flag, that is the ornament. Our ornaments are gift to the society and those come in form of the cases. Cases that can enlighten the faculty, that can enlighten the students and that can enlighten the entire practice and scholarly community. With that, I thought I would start this or I would, uh, I mean, this is kind of our tribute to one of the forefathers of uh, the case method. And it comes from uh, Professor Paul R. Lawrence. Michael, would you want to add something about him and his contribution to the world of cases? As you as you have on the slide, Anjana, I think I think uh, uh, Paul R. Lawrence's track record uh, as a leader within the case research space is, is well known. And, and for those colleagues who are not familiar, uh, Paul R. Lawrence made a substantial contribution with not just numerous of his own cases, um, but through mentorship and, and guiding others. Uh, and perhaps most relevant to us right now, his daughter, uh, Anne Lawrence, uh, who grew up on his knee, uh, sometimes in the classroom, learning case research uh, and teaching from her dad in the classroom. Uh, Anne Lawrence shares a picture that Anne John may have seen um, of her as a young girl um, wanting a birthday party. Uh, and she wanted her birthday party to be in his classroom. Uh, because she'd heard about his classroom where he was teaching. Uh, and uh, so that's uh, this picture that she has uh, of, of something that she remembers uh, so well. Uh, but it, it's the, the, the Paul R. Lawrence Fellowship um, created uh, in his name as, as a way of continuing the legacy of not just great work, 
but also supporting the next generation and supporting those around us to create great work together. Uh, so someone who is really interesting to learn more about. I hope many of you on the call will have the opportunity uh, to meet and work with Anne Lawrence. She was critical to my early steps in my case career, and I know for Anjan as well. Yeah, same has here. Had such an impact like her father um, on on really kind of developing this this area. So uh, so yes, uh, he is someone to to certainly look take a closer look at. Thank you so much. Now I thought I would start with the science of case method or teaching cases in the class. As one of, I'm, I'm just trying to display one of the research works that tried to see how students retain and take away. What are the students take away in terms of percentage from a given class? And trust me, when we go for lecture, when we go for reading, when we give our PPT in form of audio visual, the retention remains at the most 20%. But if we engage them into practicing various aspects of management, if we engage them to teach others, the retention of the learning would be over 90%. Now in the world of business education or management education, how do we engage them? We cannot create labs like computer science. I used to be a physicist. Like, it's very easy to set up a lab and tell the students, go there and practice. But what happens in our life in business education? We really cannot create that lab. So case method is the way which kind of, you know, we can say equivalent or more than a lab. Here, along with the teacher, along with the faculty, the students co-learn, they discuss and debate. I mean, as, as a teacher, most of the time when I go to into, into a class, I try to make sure that what we can bring in form of a case study or case discussion that would have my students fighting with each other. And trust me, that day they are fighting, they are shouting on each other, I'm happy. And I'm happier when at the end of the day, they come to a conclusion and they carry back the same learning along with them. And I call that co-creating. So a case study is not about just talking about a theory in form of a PPT to the class or audiovisuals or referring to a book chapter. Those are important. We also do that. But most of the learning, most of the take aways from the student, it comes from discussion and debate and co-learning and co-creation. Any thoughts from anybody from, from the audience, including our friends from NACRA, if you want to add anything, Dilbar, if you want to add anything, Madina, if you want to add anything, John. Anjan, because I, because I have to sign off, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this quick and, and say this, but your, these two slides, I think, is what makes, again, I hope all of us excited, right? You're, you're, you, you took the words right out of my mouth when you said co-created, when you get in the classroom and you're co-creating that, that experience, that experiential learning that students are able to walk away from where uh, it, it may not be the best uh, uh, at times versus getting them outside of being, being able to coach them in a business, right? Being right behind them and coaching them what they're doing right there. But I think it's the second best from being inside the business with them. And when you've actually worked on a case or written something and the students are there to discuss it and you see the light bulb go off in their head or that epiphany that goes off, um, th that's what really makes it rewarding. And, and again, I'm, I'm excited to, to see everybody here working towards that. So uh, good luck with everybody's endeavors and please don't hesitate to, to reach out to, to myself or Michael Goldman in the future. Have a nice day, John, and really you. appreciate your presence. And Anjan, thank you for all the work that you're doing. We appreciate that as well. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. So going back to uh, some of you who might not know what is a teaching case. The teaching case is nothing but it, it leverages one of the ancient ways of, of education, that is storytelling. Teaching case is basically a story a complete story which starts at some point in time 
and at the end of the story it gives some challenges or some managerial challenges to the student as i was discussing with michael during nakra and he was giving a speech i it kind of got the reaffirmation that when we think of a case or when we think of a teaching case what do we try to achieve through that what do we want the students to do it's not about learning a theory it's not about practicing a theory but it's all about leveraging theory leveraging their logic to work on this particular story to arrive at options and from the options to take a decision and defend that that's very important through a case we try to tell the students that there are multiple ways one can look at a practical problem there is no one best way so we encourage the students to arrive at multiple options and to pick up an option which is plausible which is defendable by the student and go by that that is precisely what we try to teach the students in management use the theory use the tool use the techniques to create options and from the options be confident to arrive at a decision which you can defend michael i know this this particular slide this is something i have heard from you and and kind of i'm trying to summarize what you have been speaking uh, in various forums so uh, would you like to add something here yeah i think the important point uh, from from your comments is this idea of decision making and judgment. How do managers make better decisions? And what we know from decision science, uh, from reasoned discourse, from evidence based management, from all of these different theories and studies of how do managers make decisions, we know that it is messy. <laughs> we know that it is not formulaic. It is not paint by numbers. Uh, it is not just about adding up the numbers, coming up with an obvious solution, and then just going with that. We know that managers, um, as part of this profession of management that business schools are so critical at, um, they have to work through messy information, unclear, conflicting, incomplete information in order to make a good decision. And, and sometimes those decisions seem obvious after the fact, but in the moment, uh, those decisions are often never clear. And that's what great cases need to model. That's what us as great teachers in the classroom need to facilitate, is a rigorous, deep conversation that challenges the assumptions that managers have in the room and, and really challenges them to support their argument for, for what kind of decision to take. What I tell my students in the classroom when we're doing a case discussion and we're using case learning is I want them to have strong opinions lightly held. So strong opinions because I want them to argue for a certain point. I want them to argue we should go A, not B. I want them not to say, well, we could do everything, because we know in reality, managers can't do everything. They have to make a choice. They have to choose. So I want strong opinions with evidence that managers, that students in the classroom will provide in the conversation. But, but those same students need to be open to consider alternate options when the information changes or when the arguments that they hear are better. Because we see many managers, don't we, in business, in organizations, in the public and private sector around the world, who are sometimes stuck because they've made a decision and they think they need to stick with that decision even though the situation has changed even though the context has changed and the competitive landscape has changed and the consumer dynamics have changed, but some managers are stuck. And what we need to model in the classroom through these quality cases is the ability to change one's mind 
which is a good thing when the information changes. So strong opinions likely held to manage the messiness of decision making and judgment. That contribution, I think, is critical uh, for how organizations work. And I think, as Anjan says, that is the magic source in not just what we do in the classroom, but what we feed into our cases and our instructor manuals when we write them. Thank you, Michael. So uh, one of the things or all the things that we try to achieve by developing a case and the teaching note is to engage the students to develop these five skills. In management, when we are developing or nurturing a student, it's not about dumping theories in their head. As I say, that's important. But at the same time, we need to make them ready for the market. We need to nurture them with the right kind of skills that they would leverage as managers. In doing that, every case is an opportunity if we can develop the cases in the right way. A case is like, a, like an ocean, like Michael said. There are many information, some information is important, some information might not be important. So the first skill through a case we try to develop in a student is how to collect the right information or the appropriate information from an ocean of information, which are sometimes random, hidden in the story. So that is the first thing we try to do. We try to make sure that through the cases that we develop or the cases that we use in the class, the students first would be able to collect the right information and then organize the information using certain scientific base. We call it organizing data systematically. And then using the appropriate tool, they need to know which tool to select at which point in time. If they are looking at within an organization, they need to know that they need to apply 7S and not POTAS 5 force. So after collecting the data, the case would prompt the students or invite the students to analyze the data using the correct tools and techniques. But analysis is not all. The analysis would lead the students and the student groups to create options and at the end to pick up the right options confidently and to defend it. Trust me, as practicing managers, even in our day-to-day -day life, this is exactly what we are doing. Dilbar, Michael, our other colleagues, Madina, from your experience, would you like to add anything here? Um, yeah, I think the quite important thing to add, I'm sorry, my video doesn't run because my, my, my internet connection is not that good. Yeah, from my experience, uh, well, whatever we have the feedback from the students uh, after the course, they say that it's not ex uh, essentially the, um, the lectures that they enjoyed uh, per se, but rather the cases. And they tend to remember the cases much better than whatever theory we try to teach. And quite importantly, what they say is that through the cases, they learned much more than they uh, learned from interaction maybe with us as the instructors. And I guess one of the issues right now, if we talk about the context of Kazakhstan is of course the fact that all the cases that are we are right now using are based not uh, on the either Western context or South Asian context of India and China. And the result of that, they sometimes feel detached from the cases, but the, the, the importance of the case, of course, is uh, allowing them to take the role of the decision maker. So teaching them how to think as a decision maker, as a manager. And I guess, 
this is the thing that will allow um, students to even better connect with the cases in here in Kazakhstan and Central Asia and maybe even in um, Russian speaking world also so to speak is of course trying to show them that th this strategic decision makings uh, this marketing decision makings maybe finance and etc cetera, etc cetera, are actually made on the ground even in the context of Kazakhstan because whenever um, I get the negative feedback uh, sometimes they say you know what this doesn't happen in Kazakhstan they don't see how the theory actually um, takes place um, in real world in their um, set of mind in, in the context of Kazakhstan so that is quite important that to, uh, to show them that these interesting things and this in, uh, hard decision makings are, actually can happen in their day-to-day -day, uh, future uh, decision making as uh, top managers hopefully um, in the business world right so yeah thank you Marina. i think that and, that's the, the most yeah. important thing that i can do yeah that has been my experience <laughs> as well and i'm going to share my experience but before that uh, our seasoned teachers uh dilwar zoltan marek do you have anything to add like your experience of using cases in central asia uh, in various contexts Okay, maybe I can add my, it's, the, the context is very similar in Central Europe. It has to do something around society, I would say. We as pedagogists, people who want to have an impact on the future and the knowledge of the people, we have no alternative. We do have the classic theories, but they're not enough. We can't actually rely on that. We need other tools, in particular in the future, uh, where people are, young people are more demanding on having interactive elements. Second, and this is another topic to say, is the cases are not enough. It takes actually the organizational, institutional ecosystem around it. So students do enjoy cases if they have the skills to analyze cases. Faculty have an embeddedness in a pedagogical program in which they use the cases. So it is actually no alternative, but a hard work at the same time. And I also would like to say that it is very, very entertaining. Uh, I recommend people who are pl planning to write their own cases not to write the case for one go. Uh, there is a great Harvard saying, which I, I subscribe to, you haven't taught a case unless you have taught it 10 times. And this is so beautiful as a pedagogist to discover new facets on your own case, that this is the joy of being an author of your own case study. So this is what I wish at this stage for people um, in Central Asia to, to find the energy, we call it the flow, uh, the inner joy of writing cases for pedagogy. And rather than just the theory, which there must be, there must be a, a learning point, a framework behind that, but the, your own case will take off on the long run. You should choose a career, not for two years, three years, but actually for 20 years or even longer. That's, that's the, 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 the call for action at the moment. Maybe I will add some more aspects, more detailed ones later on. Let's, please. Thank you so much. Professor Marek, Professor Dilbar. Uh, Dilbar, should I, should I talk now? Yeah, please. please uh, go ahead, Marek. You are much more experienced than me with cases. That's I, I, I don't have that much experience actually, but, uh, but well, thank you Anjan for, for taking the, the leadership on this and for, uh, for the, thank you all of, to all of you, to the organizers for, for organizing this seminar. Uh, we, we, we had discussions with Dilbar, informal discussions that we need uh, cases. And um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, at Nazarbayev University in Nur Sultan. Uh, back then, uh, Dilbar was also in Nur Sultan. So we thought, you know, let's get together and let's, let's write some cases for, 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 for the courses that we teach. And, um, uh, uh, my, may, maybe I should a little bit provide some context so that um, you understand a little uh, better, better uh, my, my uh, situ situation. Um, uh, I teach principles of finance. I teach principles of finance to se across several programs at Nazarbayev University to MBA students, executive MBA students, master of engineering management students, usually graduate students. And um, uh, apart from this, I also started to uh, record video lectures 
for the general public. Now, those video lectures, uh, that, that was basically because of COVID. You know, I started to, uh, we were forced to start using technology. Uh, I still prefer live, uh, live teaching. But at this COVID times, I had to sit down, you know, I was locked down at Nazarbayev University. We were, at some point, we were not even allowed to, to just go outside, you know. And um, I was uh, locked in my apartment and I, I was able to get a camera and I started recording, uh, I started to record lectures, first for the students and, and later I realized that, you know, why to, uh, why to limit uh, this only to, you know, 20, 30 students if I can reach the whole Kazakhstan and potentially the whole CIS region. And I speak some Russian, so I, I, I actually recorded, uh, I did recordings both in English and in Russian. And I have uh, translations of my, of my cases also into Russian. Um, and, and I uh, basically uh, uh, used cases for both for teaching at Nazarbayev University and also in those video lectures for a general public. And my goal, you know, uh, in principles of finance, I think it's a little bit different uh, from, uh, from, you know, strategic management or for, 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 from some other areas. You know, I, understand, I, I did my MBA at Wharton and I, I, we used many cases. And I remember those cases for, from strategic management. Uh, very often these are open-ended uh, cases, sometimes even without questions. Uh, they are really just um, material for discussion. Uh, in my case, it's a little different. As I do financial evaluation of projects, it's not really, uh, there is not that much of discussion. I rather use the case as illustration of the method. How would you, how would an entrepreneur, uh, you know, or, or be, uh, for example, typically, you know, beginning entrepreneur that is asking Damu, which is in Kazakhstan, you know, a source of funding for entrepreneurs that is asking Damu loan and is starting some project. And I thought I, I met many of such many such entrepreneurs, and I realized, you know, in Kazakhstan, um, and and um, you know, I don't want to say that you know things are not developed in Kazakhstan. Many many things are very well developed here, but uh, but still, I met uh, people who had very faint idea of how to how to even approach the analysis of a project. So I decided to do simple illustrations, very basic, simple illustrations. And I wrote several mini cases and two larger cases. Uh, they are all based on real situations, but I wouldn't say that everything in the case is real, you know? So uh, let me give you an example. The, 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 the last, the most recent case, I wrote with a guy in Shimkent, which is, uh, you know, so south, uh, southern Kazakhstan. And uh, this guy is a grower of, of lemons, you know, the variety of lemons that is called Tashkensky Limon. And, um, and I, wrote, I just met him through a newspaper, you know, there was an article in a newspaper. So I, through the editor of the newspaper, through the journalist, I, I, I met him. And we started to basically discuss how, how it is to set up a plantation to grow lemons. And I know there are many, many farmers, many, many people who want to do farming in Kazakhstan. And uh, again, they will, it would be good if they understand financial side, you know, some financial planning, if they can look at financing of, of a project. So, so, so together we, we worked out a case, basically it's a 10 hectare plantation, you know, it's an investment proposal. You, you, can, you could also view at this case as, as an investment proposal. At, at, at the moment, you know, the COVID started and uh, then I left Kazakhstan. Now I'm stuck in Czech Republic for already eight months, you know, teaching online. But back then we were in search of an investor you know, for this project. And there were some executive MBA students for also from Nazarbayev University who actually flew to Shimkent, met the guy and started discuss discussing actual investment. So, you know, so there are many, many real, uh, real life elements and uh, all the information is, is real, but in some sense, it's still just a, um, a business plan or, or a business proposal. So that was one illustration. Another illustration is valuation of some, you know, restaurants, hotels, uh, again, things that local entrepreneurs very often, you know, are interested in or things that most people understand and um, um, uh, they can then look at, again, at the financial analysis side. Uh, I would say I, I never submitted those cases to any journal because I thought uh, that uh, uh, they would not be very in interesting for, for readers or students 
um, from other regions, you know, because when, yes, uh, you know, in, uh, Americans would look at Kazakhstan as, as an emerging market and they would love to see some cases as, for example, you know, on, on the on the emerging markets, yeah? But my cases are not really about the emerging markets. My cases are just simple financial analysis, the, the exactly same way it would be done in America, yeah? So I, I don't think that uh, there, would, there would be need. And actually, uh, at, I was just, um, just uh, typing an email to John Varlaro. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask him for, for, for advice and, uh, and for help. And uh, I, I'm, I would like to see if, 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 if those cases that I have already, if they can be, you know, somehow either published or shared. Um, I remember that when I visited Narcos, and not only Narcos, some other Almaty uh, universities, I, I basically shared those cases on, on a USB drive, you know, so some people copied them. I don't know whether they use them or not, but, um, but um, um, uh, they, they have them. So that's, that's, that's my background. That's, that's, that's uh, pretty much... You know, this is the story about my case studies, and um, uh, again, I think today uh, I started to understand that maybe I should uh, take some extra steps and at least find out whether others would be interested in those cases, and maybe maybe make them available. You know, for for uh, to publish or 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 um, although they are on SSRN, they are on SSRN, so anyone can in you know, can go and, and download them. And I have some views, some downloads, you know, a few hundred downloads. I would suspect that mostly these are my students. But, uh, but um, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. So hopefully after, after today, I will, I will may, maybe it will make me to, to be more active and um, um, see how I can actually uh, publish those cases or, 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 how to write more cases, maybe even in collaboration with others, you know. So this forum is is uh, uh, quite useful because we can start uh, writing on uh, writing cases together, and we can uh, share the material that we already have. And I think, thank you, Marek. I think you brought a very very uh, valid point, and I see uh, Michael smiling on this. Uh, this is precisely. Uh, the mission of NACRA, this is precisely where uh, the reason we started and we are pushing uh, the Silk Road Case Center in Kazakhstan. So it's not about just writing the case, but we would try to make sure that every case finds a suitable home by acting as a resource center to, to help each and every individual stakeholders to make sure that their cases are reaching across the globe or wherever it needs to reach. Uh, Dilbar, you want to add anything here? I think now I understand why you are pushing the whole, because you have been in this uh, region for 20 years. Now I could see after hearing from your colleagues who are my colleagues now, from now onwards, I really see your the reason of your excitement and your push on this whole case initiative. initiative. So a uh, few words from you. Uh, thank you, thank you indeed, thank you all. And uh, I see now an opportunity for all of us who are involved in the project probably finally to put the efforts together and come up with a really very uh, effective case studies which will be used in Kazakhstan in business schools and uh, Zoltan, uh, you have the reason to stay here <laughs> and your reason is flow, Zoltan um, already mentioned and actually Zoltan is co-author of the flow theory and those who are in leadership know this theory very well. The author is uh, Dr. Csikszentmihalyi, <laughs> yes, and uh, all we need uh, to develop our initiative and um, finally to come up with the Kazakhstan in case bank is flow. So the, the flow is given by Zoltan already. Uh, I already feel the flow Zoltan. And my way um, has been a little bit different but long one. 
you know, uh, almost 20 years ago when I worked for KIMAP University, this is actually where we met with Mark, <laughs> already 20 years, sorry to say. Um, actually, uh, we, I had the pleasure of being, you know, part of the uh, case study project at KIMAP at that time and professors from Europe uh, who came on the TASIS program, technical assistance to CIS countries, supervised us on uh, developing case studies, teaching cases in classrooms, etc. Then um, I uh, was lucky to be chosen for another project. Uh, that project was called AES Leadership Development Project. And under the project terms, we were sent to Darden Business School, Virginia University where uh, professors from Harvard and Darden Business School taught us how to use case studies in the classroom, how to develop teaching notes, how to write and publish cases and so on. So it's been a long way. And since then I've been using case studies in my classes. Um, I teach strategy and business policies, strategic management. Another former colleague of mine is also here. Her name is Janet Humphrey. I don't know, Janet, where you are now, probably in Dubai. Mark, you may remember, we all worked together <laughs> many years ago, and I'm sure Janet also has something to share with us. Uh, but the flow is really needed. And Zoltan, uh, you could probably uh, give us the flow. <laughs> Well, if, since you're asking, I don't know what the structure is and I don't want to steal the show. I, I, I just applied an hour ago or so, but uh, I think maybe it is important to give the essence in this community about this mythical world, word, the flow. Most people think that it has to do something with karma or with, you know, esoteric stuff. Actually, it is a mental state which everybody can achieve uh, when you are doing an activity. And we are, should be striving for this wherever we are in everyday activities, but also during the work, of course. And as pedagogists, case writers, I assume that here there are many younger uh, fellow colleagues who are struggling with, as I had to struggle with the realities of being a business teacher in an emerging market reality and seeing all these people around the globe who are well off. The essence is that if you're in the flow state during your work, you actually find your work meaningful and your life becomes meaningful. How to achieve that? It can be trained, it can be exercised. The first input into achieving the flow state is you must have a clear goal. Case writing is ideal for that. If you set yourself the goal that you're going to write a case, say in half a year or in a year's time, uh, maybe shorter, a short case, that's step number one. The step number two is that the case should not be too difficult because you will feel frustrated. It is called uh, worry or anxiety, and you should assess your skills. So the balance between skills and challenges is the second input into achieving flow. The third element for any flow uh, state to, to come about, even when you're running or you do a painting or cooking, is that you need some sort of feedback. Musicians, artists can smell it, see, hear. For us case writers, we need people who give you feedback. So I recommend you do first an outline and you get a mentor, a colleague to get uh, you give you feedback. Don't wait until the case is complete and perfect. Many uh, young people I come across in Central Asia are perfectionists. You know, that we've been brought up by doing everything perfect and they don't release the work because it's not there. So the third element was seeking and receiving feedback. The fourth element is focus. I really know how difficult it is to make a living running here and there, but you should put aside into your planning uh, uh, two or three hours during a week when you say this is going to be around the case writing. And if you do this, then you have the chances of discovering the flow during this activity. You have a goal, balance challenges and skills to receive or ask for feedback and to focus on this. The rest of it will come hopefully uh, gradually. And the more often one is in flow, the more often you experience that you enjoyed it, you build up something which is called psychological capital. I know in Kazakhstan, people are crazy about human capital, but human capital is only the knowledge. You need the inside energies to write your next cases, the third cases to become a mentor of others. And this uh, psychological capital 
we know from science is developed when you have made successful uh, achievements in your own flow uh, case in your own writings. So Dilba, I don't want to make this too long. But this is the essence. This is the, you know, the flow of the theory applied. If you want to read something easy about this, uh, instead of reading the Russian book by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi on the flow or the good business principles, the easiest read for anyone is to get the English book. It's called Running Flow because it's a parallel about how marathon runners achieve marathon running. You know, for us, it doesn't make sense, but they still run, run, run. And that book des describes very well the techniques they use. And those techniques can be in analogy, be taken into case, case writing uh, people. At the same time, for Dilbar and Anjan, uh, who are institutional leaders, for people like Michael, and we had John before, and Marek, um, the, the relevance of all this is that this is not a individual batir's fighter's journey. You have to create as an organization, the support mechanisms, the communities where people are uh, making progress and they can be proud of their cases. We see those great cases from Harvard and you know, you mentioned the American and uh, a young author is completely overwhelmed with that. They can't publish in these uh, journals in the first round, but they need the institutional support. I would say two, three years is the process of developing this. And I've seen that in Central Asia, this has been coming up and down constantly at other institutions. So the, the story is not completely new, uh, but it takes a little bit more of a long-term vision, say three years, five years on, on nurturing these, uh, these careers. And uh, I'm very happy that Marek was here, for example, because you know uh, he's living in, uh, in the region and he shows that it is actually uh, a, a worthwhile engagement so um, most young people, case, case, potential case writers in Central Asia, they don't have good role models. And through this importing Nazarbayev University, New Dilba having worked in the sector, Anja and you seem to have arrived. I think we're setting new great role model possibilities uh, for the next generations. And by the way, uh, the two things, first of all, uh, with the support from NACRA, what we are trying to do with Silk Road Case Center is exactly like that. Starting from a case idea or a query on case, anybody can contact us. And our job is to uh, kind of realize their dreams or their aspiration of becoming a case writer or case author. The second thing is that, trust me, the role models have already arrived and they are part of my presentation that there are, uh, there are not only faculty members, students are writing cases and winning international awards. So uh, give me some time and I'm going to share those exciting stories. But before that, for the general audience, this is what we try to get in a case in terms of structure. And uh, Michael, please correct me if there are certain elements that I'm missing. The first thing first, in a case, as we try to simulate an environment, any case starts with a protagonist and a problem. So every student knows that he or she needs to play the role of the protagonist, like a CEO or a manager of an organization, and to work on a particular problem. Now to solve the problem, the student or the manager requires information. The information comes in form of information on the case context, like where the organization is facing the problem, what is the structure of the industry, many things, many possibilities, but there is one section in the case which goes into describing the organization's immediate environment. Another section goes into defining and describing the organization and what is happening within the organization. At the end of end part of the case, and this case goes to the students, this particular part, the problem is there are more information in terms of exhibits, in terms of uh, you know micro level details. Further details are provided in the case for the students, and at the end of it, the student as I said, is expected to work on the problem using the learning that he had, leveraging the theories to arrive as, at a set of options and decisions. That is the first part of the case. 
but a case remains incomplete unless and until the author writes a teaching note because it's not necessarily that the author himself or herself is going to teach the case all the time. So a publisher would expect a teaching note, which is kind of an integrated part of the case. Uh, so the case should accompany with teaching notes, which would provide guidance to the faculty members, to the teachers on how to leverage the case in anchoring the discussion in the class and to make sure the learning objectives are met. Uh, Michael, would you want to add anything here or uh, let me finish this particular slide then probably it would give you a stronger platform to speak. Now, uh, going back to Marek's uh, point or concern, where can you publish the case? Can you publish the case at all? There are various forums and platforms. They are eager to get our cases, trust me. And there are various platforms which are also uh, part of the Scopus listing or ABDC listing. Let me start with the, uh, with the first, first tip. As uh, our colleagues have also said that our cases need review in most of the time when we develop the cases, one of the formal forum is case conferences like the one NACRA conducts every year. So in the conferences, these are international conferences, a case author can submit their cases and to receive feedback. That is the first thing. Second, there are case books which are published by various publishers at various point in time. The third outlet is the clearing houses like Harvard Business Publishing, IMD, IP Publishing or Case Center where you can put your cases for publishing. But as faculty, as publication is important for us as well, there are a number of leading journals in the world, including the case research journal where you can give your case or submit your manuscript for consideration. Here, I'm very happy to say that we have, uh, we have the editor. Again, Michael is the chairman of NACRA. He is also the editor of, uh, of one of the leading journals. And you can see the picture of the journal at the left. It's the journal uh, or case journal on emerging markets. So I think in this forum, he is the best person or one of the best persons to talk about the ultimate home for a case that is publishing a case and making the case available to the entire world. I know, Michael, I'm bothering you too much, but it's an opportunity for us to have you here. We don't get you here every day. So well, sounds fabulous. Thank you. I mean, and as you heard from uh, from everyone else, uh, you know, the starting point often for our cases is what do we need in our classrooms? What kind of gaps are there? in what we're teaching and have we identified as teachers where a case may fit. So as Marek said, uh, he was looking for a certain case around financial valuation or calculations and he developed something to use himself in the class. And that's often a starting point for many of us. But once we've done that work, um, whatever kind of, of, of case research goes into developing that work over a few days or weeks, what do we do with that afterwards? And as Anjan says, it's a fabulous opportunity to then take that and, and find a home for it internationally in a case collection or case publisher that allows others to use it um, and, and for it to be picked up and, and used. So as Anjan mentioned, there's a range of places uh, that, that you can focus. Um, some of those have slightly different requirements for the kinds of cases that they're looking to publish. For example, the case research journal from the North American Case Research Association from NACRA is very focused on decision focused cases. So there needs to be a very clear decision that a protagonist needs to make. Um, and that is a critical component. They also really like primary data cases, 
cases where you've conducted uh, you know, interviews with a protagonist, multiple interviews within the organization. Uh, and so that's a primary focus of the case research journal. Although secondary source cases, cases that are developed only with secondary sources, really good quality secondary sources, uh, those often do really well and sell really well, delivering some good royalties uh, to our colleagues uh, when they write some of those cases as well. So secondary source or primary source cases um, in those kinds of places. Uh, as, uh, as Anjan mentioned, you know, from, a, from an Emerald publishing point of view, I, I put in the chat a link to the Emer uh, Emerging Market Case Studies collection of which I'm editor. Uh, and our focus there is very much uh, cases from and about uh, interesting organizations within emerging markets. Uh, where the context makes the decision more interesting. And yes, as Marek said, the calculations may be similar, but perhaps the context and the variables that enter into that decision are slightly different because of some of those emerging market contexts. Uh, and so certainly we publish cases, over 100 cases a year uh, that are focused on on these kinds of decisions in different emerging markets around the world. Um, you know, Ivy Publishing is one of the partners of, of NACRA and they regularly come to our conferences and work with us. Uh, and obviously the NACRA cases are published via the Harvard Business Publishing platform, which we all know is a fabulous clearinghouse for cases. So we are spoilt for choice. <laughs> we are spoilt for choice. Um, my recommendation to authors always is, you know, start with what's called a startup case. Um, and I'm going to post here quickly in the chat uh, a link to a, uh, a template that uh, we've created for startup cases. Uh, and basically, this is a two page uh, initial set of ideas for how we can develop a case. And so this may be part of your development process is to fill out these sections, uh, to think about who the organization is, who is the protagonist, what's the issue, what kind of learning outcomes. Important first steps in scoping out a case study. And so for those of you in the call who have had less experience writing cases, who want to start the journey uh, with Anjan, uh, you know, the startup case and that template may be a useful way to think about putting the pieces together, right? And then you're picking up the phone and you're making contact with organizations and you're developing the case over a period of time. Um, and, and then, as we said, feedback is critical. As Zoltan says with Flow, that feedback and the iterative process with trusted colleagues is so powerful. Part of my day every day is reading other people's cases and giving them feedback on their cases. Uh, and I encourage all of the, us to do that. We need to be a community that is open to sharing our early work, our first few pages of work with each other and to get some friendly good quality feedback where I might say to Anjan, I really liked what you did when you started that case, when you had the opening paragraph, but then it felt that your context, your background section maybe was a little bit dated. Can you update that? Or Anjan, I really liked the way that you spoke about the banking sector within Kazakhstan, but the urgency of the dilemma was, was missing a little bit in your opening. This is the kind of friendly but useful feedback that I think we need to get every few weeks as we work with not just co-authors, but colleagues, that we can work together uh, and develop cases together. I think one of the things about the case community is one doesn't need to be a co-author to help someone work on a case and make it better. Uh, I, I think you know being open to giving feedback and reading other cases, uh, that's what we need to be doing. That's how I think we develop that good feedback. And then going to conferences, presenting the case, getting more structured feedback, 
Uh, and as Anjan said, submitting it to one of these many outlets uh, to get it published, to get a good line on our resume, to keep the dean happy, uh, to make sure that we're building our careers from a publishing point of view with, uh, with intellectual contribution that makes a broader impact. Thank you, Michael. I think with the aspect of startup case, you, uh, you helped me to come to the next part of my presentation where a year ago or a year and a half ago when I landed up here, with the students, I started working on a few startup cases and they are now at various aspects of uh, their life cycle. So what I thought to the entire audience, we would give some glimpses of the cases that were startup cases a year ago and which are now, uh, which kind of went through the NACRA conference path and now at various stages of development or various stages of review at various leading journals. Uh, the first one, and this is one of the most ambitious cases that we took over last year, it was about a Chase Academy, Zansar Abdul Malik Chase Academy. This Chase Academy is not about a Chase Academy. It was a case about a mother's struggle in nurturing her daughter, you can see the photo of the daughter who is now a member of the parliament in Kazakhstan, by the way, uh, she was selected. She is a rock star here in, because she is a world champion in chase. But what the case found, what our research found was not on her, but her mother struggled to make her a world champion. And she as a mother did not stop there. She had to travel to Singapore, stay there two years with her daughter, never getting a chance to return to Kazakhstan. And the daughter used to cry every day, mom, I want to go back to my family, to my brother, to my father. They could not do it. With this struggle, this kind of prompted her mother to start a Chase Academy in Kazakhstan so that Kazakhstan kids can be nurtured in Chase in Kazakhstan. And trust me, it's the contribution of the Chase Academy that Chase is now a great A sports in Kazakhstan vis-a-vis -vis when she was getting trained, it was a great C sports. Hundreds of kids are undertaking training over there. And not only that, over the period of time, the CEO of the organization, she realized that the kids who are playing chess, they might not become world champion, but they are becoming very good in computer programming. So now her business of Chase Academy got extended into a, one of the largest residential schools in, in uh, Kazakhstan, sponsored by the government, where chess and computer programming are combined together to nurture talents. So here is one case where we found motherhood as the source of inspiration in entrepreneurship. Similarly, there was another case that we found a person who was an alumni of Narhos. When this boy or when this man, young person took over the family business of a number of successful restaurants in Kazakhstan, by that time, Kazakhstan became independent and religion started returning to this, to this region. As a result, this person started following Islam and he closed down all the previous restaurant, successful family business that was selling uh, a particular kind of meat and alcohol. And he kind of rebranded and restarted the business as a burger chain that is now selling coffee, non-alcohol, and halal certified, uh, halal certified products. So what we try to see here for the business scholars is a particular dynamics which combines family business as well as changing characteristics of the region. And that is kind of changing the whole business model altogether. Similarly, we found in another case, a lady who was a chartered accountant who was working for one of the big four organizations, 
but her passion she was from one of the one of the small towns here but her passion for language or language training made her to become one of the top language training institutes in the country so what we are what i am trying to tell here is all about these various stories another story is this is one lady she is a technology entrepreneur and the product that she is she is developing and selling trust me kazakhstan is not her market so she is one of the advanced level first generation entrepreneur who thought of producing something in kazakhstan with the global market and the north american market in mind so the way the whole aspect of entrepreneurship how the vision is broadening how the concept of market is opening up to this young entrepreneurs is kind of the core of the case study for this particular case similarly i like like some of you i also traveled to shimken and i found this person who has put who is an artist but who has put all his life savings and energy to create an underground museum which talks about kazakhstan culture which connects music music to religion to some other cultural aspects and he himself is an institution right now so the whole aspect of cultural entrepreneurship is another case that we are focusing on at this moment and then we found because english is now one of the new things that the generation or the families are enjoying in every family where the elder members do not speak english but their kids are learning english at the school these kids are now contributing to the business is unbelievable but whenever a customer like me who is not speaking local language moving into a store the parents proud parents they are calling their kids to interact with us so the whole dynamics of business because of this kids who are fluent in english so that is another aspect that we are seeing how language and the generation new generation who are learning this language from the very early age is changing or helping the businesses or small businesses is another dynamics that we have found and we have endless stories the stories that we have said at the beginning or or just now those are about small organizations but trust me we are receiving similar support or similar encouragement from some of the biggest companies some of the biggest names of central asia and kazakhstan forte bank is one of the example we just approached them they said yes write a case on us and what a case it is this is like one of the rarest of the rare example in the whole world where a small bank went ahead and acquired three big banks of kazakhstan they are consultants from europe say do not do that nobody has done in the world this particular thing but they have done so we are trying to understand what went into their mind so that they are so confident in going moving forward and doing this now saying that a question comes to the authors of kazakhstan case writers the world would not look at our cases that's very wrong what we have found our cases are already first of all sorry there are two concerns the authors think and sometimes when we interact with our faculty member they say no the companies would not encourage us they would say no to us they would not open their doors for us our experience is completely different in 99% cases when we are approaching organizations when our kids like our students are approaching the organizations kazakhstan organizations are receiving us with open arms they are saying yes welcome come to us work with us and write cases on the left hand side if you see in this particular slide you would be seeing our students and their relationship the way they are received by uh, by various entrepreneurs in this city in this country very encouraging that we do not see all the time yesterday i was equally surprised when we started working with one of the biggest largest fashion brands kids fashion brands in kazakhstan 
before we reacted and we kind of you know closed our computer the ceo and founder of the company she was in instagram talking about us she was excited that a case is being written by narhos university on us although i do not understand the language whatever she wrote but see the excitement see see the energy see the potential of this of this beautiful region the second part comes sometimes we hear well we would write the cases on on kazakhstan on kazakhstan organizations but who is going to publish us will it be received by the world we have an answer to that as well our cases on forty bank already got the recognition from the case center our cases on the chase academy has now won the best case award in india and we are talking about india where the competition had over 200 submissions this was the only submission from kazakhstan our cases and that was the first i would say our first success four cases co developed with our students got accepted at nacra all the cases that we submitted thanks to michael that time i did not know michael personally so there was no personal favor that went through the blind reviews and got recognized and got accepted for the nacra conference those cases are at various stages now in various journals and another thing is all the, there are two photos you would be seeing two portraits one is anna another is aditi both of them were part of narhos university in the last two years they won the paul lawrence fellowship for their potential or for their contribution in case method so what i am trying to say not only that region is welcoming us to write cases on them the world is welcoming us when we are knocking the door with these cases so i think the time is right the time is exciting and we have no reason to stop here but to begin our exciting journey from here uh i think we still have half an hour and one of the colleagues that we have today a year ago she had no idea about cases now she is handling three or four uh, big case projects she won uh, the case center scholarship for her cases on for her case on forte bank so at this moment i would welcome our colleague at narhos uh, elena krupina to share her experience i mean i think it's very important for the audience not only to hear from the faculty members or the people who are already working with cases but also to hear from our colleagues a year ago who had no idea about how to develop a case and now she is sitting with three or four cases so eliana a warm welcome to you and please enlighten us with your experience for the last one year or six months i would say six months on what made you interested in case writing how you won the award and what are the projects that you are doing take around 5 to 10 minutes and uh, please help us to understand what went into your mind how you motivated yourself etc cetera, etc cetera. i don't want to structure your speech but please help us in understanding you and your psychology as a early stage case writer welcome so much anjan uh good evening everyone uh, basically i am i was a new person for in research i just applied for my phd a year ago and then i opened the whole world of uh, scientific research uh, where we need to publish articles uh various papers uh including scopus journals uh then writing my dissertation and uh, besides this um, i have been teaching uh for 5 6 years and um, during my again teaching experience i realized that uh when you lecture students basically you don't have their full attention uh so i started to use cases myself and then i also noticed that students prefer cases on kazakhstani companies uh so then i started to use uh local examples maybe something i heard in the news or uh using local contacts 
uh, inviting guest lectures, etc. And then when Ajahn arrived, uh, he started this initiative with the case research and um, uh, we went for a fourth bank, they agreed uh, to work with us on the case research. Uh, so basically here on the left, uh, the first slide where three of us discussing the structure of the case, uh, the process was really interested. Uh, then um, Anjan again encouraged us to apply for the case center writing scholarship. I heard that students uh, are participating in international conferences and I was like, okay, bachelor students can do it. Why not? I can, why, why not? I can do this. Um, I started to reach different uh, companies, which were like interesting for me. Uh, one of them is uh, Choka Family Holding. Uh, the, the main owner, he holds various companies. Basically, it's like uh, e-commerce uh, e here. So they're selling tickets, uh, some coupon discounts, etc. cetera. Um, I just found his email on the internet, sent him a letter offering to work with us on the case. And within three days, he replied to me and he said, yes, of course, why not? We are really interested in this. Uh, then we applied for Glova company. Uh, again, like Glova, a Spanish-based startup, they, they have just entered Kazakhstan. Uh, and they also agreed to work with us on the case. So the dilemma there was whether to enter Kazakhstan or not. And uh, when I realized that uh, companies are open for collaboration. They're really interested in um, sharing their knowledge to structure their knowledge and educate students. Um, I saw the interest and I saw that the process is really interesting for myself. So even I found out a lot of new things. And again, from case writer perspective, um, it's like, uh, you know, you, you see that you, the series that you re read in the books, yeah, uh, which you uh, <laughs> discuss with the students, etc. You see that in reality, the companies, they use this series. And I realized that it's a really good way uh, to educate students, to show them that, guys, yes, you need to read books. Yes, you need to know this series. And you can apply this series when you become a top manager. Look at our Kazakhstani cases. Yeah. So, for example, with Glova, the decision whether to enter Kazakhstani market or not, uh, we can teach them how to apply SWOT analysis, five fortress analysis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they see the value of this, and they see that all these like board, boring theory, boring stuff, I, actually it's a fun. So this <laughs> this is my main motivation. Elena, thank you so much. And one of the things that I thought uh, I would tell uh, everyone that. At the background, this is my office. At the background, you see these lights. So every light represents a case. When I started my journey a year ago, it was blank. But I uh, told myself that every time we are starting a new project, we would put a photo of the project along with the light there. Uh, this particular chain had like around 15 lights there. That chain is now full. I have purchased the second chain that I'm going to put uh, very soon. We have given the photos for printing. So what I'm saying, uh, you know, the one, the purpose of today's session is to come together, share our excitements, and to take this mission of developing cases in this region forward. One of the great things that has happened, and all thanks to uh, Michael and his team at NACRA, that this year, NACRA has decided to have a special track on, on uh, that, that would accept cases in, in Russian language. Many of our colleagues, uh, are not native English speaker. They are, they are teaching, they are writing in Russian. So this is their opportunity to write cases in Russian language and submit in this track. Apart from this track, we have our regular tracks in English and other languages. So I take this opportunity to, uh, to welcome two of my colleagues and very, uh, very close friends, 
Madina Subalova and Igrim. Igrim, unfortunately, is uh, is in a plane right now. She is returning from the capital. Uh, so uh, I would request all of us to welcome these two members and, and very close friends of mine. Madina, if your camera is uh, fixed by now, can you please come on board? Well, it's clear. <laughs> my camera is, is working, but my data connection is not that good. So I'll try okay. again. That's okay. So, sorry. so yeah, uh, um... I think this is one of, the, one of the biggest recognitions apart from winning awards in the past is that Michael and his team has agreed to start this very important track. And I think this track is going to make a lot of impact uh, to the way uh, cases are developed or cases are leveraged in, in teaching. This is a huge encouragement for the entire region. And I wholeheartedly thank Michael and his team and NACRA for this opportunity. And uh, at the same time, uh, to the entire audience, all of you who are interested in, now I can see Madina. Madina, yeah, yeah, yeah. happy to see you. <laughs> uh, so so uh, Madina, you want to say something? I know you have been trying to bring the whole aspect of case studies uh, for, for close to three years. And to the entire audience, by the way, today I'm sitting in Kazakhstan because this brave lady uh, and my friend Madina, she took the pain to travel to India when the temperature was not much, around 45 degrees centigrade, to chase me and to convince me to come to Kazakhstan. And I'm not complaining. She, the only thing that she says, come here, the opportunity of doing research on cases, this is infinite. And today, again, I thank Madina for this. And Madina, for you, for your students, and for all of your colleagues who are present here, uh, if you want to say something, we would appreciate. Well, yeah, uh, I think that one of the important um, kind of message that we have to understand today through today's session is that this is not about the what we can do for, as uh, from the uh, from the question of teaching cases, but uh, rather to allow it to become the avenue for for the future research that could be done by our doctoral fellows. Thing is that majority of the people who are attending today, um, in terms of the listeners and who are not essentially the part of our team of case research people, um, is of course the young researchers such as Elena and there are a couple of my own uh, doctoral students. So I. Yes, we are talking about quite simple and maybe quite obvious things to us, uh, to to the to, to the researchers, but for the um, for the yeah. scholars who are at the very beginning of their path, I think this is a really nice start because it's very difficult to transfer from the. Uh, um, mindset of a student towards the researcher and the majority of our um, young researchers are going through that stage and I think one, one, one of the most important thing is to highlight to them that the things that are interesting to outside uh, to outside viewers um, from the theoretical point of view from um, western world to, to us uh, from local environment, it's very obvious. And sometimes uh, it's very difficult for the students to explain, come on guys, the, the way that the business is done here is completely different than, than uh, the way the business is done uh, out of the uh, Central Asia. And I think the cases is a very good um, example to show the Western world and the Western uh, researchers that Kazakhstan is a really interesting place for the um, research. And actually the success that um, Aditya and Elena had uh, with NACRA cases and the fact that they got quite a big, uh, good recognition, so to speak, um, shows us that yeah. the, the area here in Kazakhstan is very under-researched. And at the same time, it has a very interesting internal, um, I guess the word would be internal um, momentum of changing um, economic, uh, economic environment that cannot, that cannot be replicated anywhere else. And this is very interesting because it can be very enriching in terms of the um, theory. And I hope that our students will get it because right now, when we talk about young researchers here in Kazakhstan, they try to see um, 
the the uh, the way that the research is done, the way that they are taught by their elder elder professors who are very much um, very much stuck. And I'm, 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 I know that's not a very positive word, but they're very much stuck in uh, the way the Soviet way of thinking and Soviet way of doing social research. But what we want to bring through cases mm -hmm. is not only the new way of doing research by our by uh, our uh, our new faculty, younger faculty, but also to attract the international um, attention, I guess, to to Kazakhstan, so that our students, our doctoral fellows would be able to learn from them. So I think that cases is the way to do it because that way we can put Kazakhstan, so to speak, on the map of the um, researchers who would be able to do it. So right now we are working with quite a few uh, international researchers, um, some of from states, some of from England. And what they are finding here, the same way as um, Anjan did is that the um, Kazakhstan um, context is so interesting and you can do the research that is quite beyond uh, what is done elsewhere and uh, it can essentially very much enrich the um, the theory in a new way so this is quite important and I hope that the cases will be the the, the first initiative that will bring the attention of maybe external research Thank you, Madina. And I must apologize that you know we work. We have been working so close for for, uh, yeah, for yeah. two years now. I'm sorry, my and my camera got away. I'm so sorry. This, this is the thing that the connection is really bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to talk. To no, I was I yeah, was sorry. apologizing to you that you know this has been the thing. Whenever I go, uh, I introduce Madina like here is Madina, my friend. But I forgot that this is although kind of. We are discussing things informally, but yeah. Madina, please take a second to introduce yourself. Please don't try. All right, sorry. Okay. My name is. Uh, uh, this is my. Madina Subalova. This is my problem. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. My name is Madina Subalova. I'm a PhD, um, the do doctor of philosophy, I guess, <laughs> and I am the head of the project management institute here in in Almaty as a five um, as Fife University, which is a very, um, I guess, an university with a very rich history. And uh, but they, it, it's quite recent that they decided to, um, I guess, develop the rather than the technical side, uh, develop the social sciences. And right now we are we are um, in the process of the creating our own strong team and majority of us, of course, uh, internationally educated. There are a couple of my colleagues here, such as uh, Dr. Chukandala Mulian and uh, a couple of our doctoral students. And what we want to do in our, um, in, uh, in our small little institute is of course to in, um, nurture the idea of uh, research that will be world-class, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, and um, uh, as someone who essentially quite close friends with Anjan and the fact that we are working closely on a couple of projects together, Anjan was very generous and <laughs> very trusting, I guess, <laughs> to invite me as um, editor for the NACRA Russian track. I hope that, that that's going to be um, a great initiative and uh, I, won't be, I, won't, I won't bring shame to Anjan. And uh, my other colleague who's going to be leading this um, initiative is, of course, Aigiriya Marai Hamran. Unfortunately, she's not here, but we also work together back at Norhaus, and um, she's a really good acquaintance of mine. So I guess, yeah, uh, what we are trying to do here is, of course, uh, bringing the new uh, I guess, um, research method here in Kazakhstan, and of course, um, trying to develop a proper research here. So yeah, that's the thing. Thank you. I talked too much. Oh, no, I mean, we all, we all, today is all about, uh, we need to talk too much, I think today, that's the thing. So one of the things that, uh, this is kind of my last slide, and all I want to say uh, to many of you who are yet to, uh, yet to enter the beautiful world of case method that just registered to a case by start reading cases, start teaching cases. And whenever you have an interesting idea, just walk in, 
right to any of us who are here today, uh, including Michael, Dilbar, Madina, Elena, me. And I think both Silk Road Case Center at Narhos University and NACRA, we all are committed to give the world a series of beautiful cases that is going to enrich the whole aspect of management education in Kazakhstan, as well as in the region, as well as in the entire world, I would say. And whenever I say these things, it sounds big, but I think whatever I'm saying, I, I completely believe that. With that, I would open the floor uh, for the questions. If you have any questions, thoughts, we would love to answer. And after that, I would request uh, both Dilbar and Michael to, uh, to deliver your closing notes. So we can spend around uh, five to eight minutes, take two, three questions at the most five from the audience. And then uh, we'll go home and eat dinner and breakfast. I know, Michael, have you had your breakfast? Did you get a chance? You had to wake up very early in the morning, I know. Just a little bit. Okay, another 10 minutes. <laughs> Questions, thoughts, comments? I have a quick question. It would sure. be very helpful for this community to hear uh, what are the next outlets to reconnect with this initiative? Do you plan to have a new session uh, in the next few months? Uh, a web a web page, uh, an email, a chat forum. So this is standing here, and as a participant, I have not come across this. Maybe it's just on my side, but I would like to prompt you on making a commitment on how to take this energy further, um, without being too pushy. Uh, I know uh, from NACRA side, we are going to uh, roll out a series of webinars. Uh, so NACRA and, and that would be mostly to encourage and nurture the authors and support the authors to get ready for developing cases, both uh, startup cases and full cases for NACRA conference. So that's one thing which is already in the pipeline. Another thing we would want to hear from Dilbar that how as the leader of this whole initiative, you would want us to take things forward. And Madina, for your institute, if you have some other plans, uh, we, are, we are eager to know that as well. So dear guests, dear partners, dear um, speakers, uh, dear former and current colleagues, um, I thank you very much for your participation in this session today. And special thanks, uh, I would like to send to Zoltan for sending us the flow. And I think everybody can feel the flow <laughs> which is be being sent from Hungary now. And indeed, I feel very positive about the initiative we are announcing today. And I really hope that the flow will stay with us and will develop the project further. Um, we've already started, as I mentioned before, with our faculty members and our plan is to uh, publish 20, 25 cases by the end of academic year and our faculty members uh, have already shown their interest and some of them have already started uh, uh, their research and we invite all of you to join the initiative. Um, all the consultation needed will be provided later. All our guests uh, shared their personal contacts with you today. And um, already some of the questions have been addressed and our guests are sending the uh, links to useful videos and materials needed. So please feel free to use and um, yeah, my job is to thank you all, that's it. And, and I thank my colleagues, Kamar and Gulnara and Yelena 
for making this event yeah. happen today. Sure. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you. And thank you. Sir. Thank you Elena, so much. Can you please uh, share the uh, PPT PowerPoint presentation that we have received from uh, NACRA from John? I have shared it, Kamar or Eliana, anybody? Because uh, NACRA wanted this to be shared with the entire audience. Uh, I will send it uh, in the chat so those who need this presentation can upload it or can download it. And Michael, uh, my final request for today, uh, some, some thoughts, some closing comments from your side to the entire audience in Thank bringing you. these two worlds together. I see a hand from, is it Gaukar? Did Gaukar have a question there, a hand I see? Oh, I don't see anything. Uh, any question from anybody? I see Galkar's hand on Zoom. Um, did Galkar have a question? Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Galkar Nisha, and I think I'm a little bit late with my question. I have to feed my baby now. <laughs> but the interest to listen to all this presentation and the initiative by Narcos University is so exciting because uh, basically I'm uh, international relations Sorry, I think I, I cannot talk right now, <laughs> but I will address my question to Dilbar and other colleagues. Thank you so much for this. Uh, yeah, and my yeah. our wishes Let's to you. Keep in baby. touch. I mean, we are uh, <laughs> we all love him or her. Yeah, we we all love you, kid. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, we, we're now living in the world where pets and children and everyone are welcome on all calls. That's the new reality. Yeah, uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean. Anja and Dilba, everyone, I mean, let me kind of close off with some comments from my side. It's been it's been so inspirational for me uh, to, to stand here and be part of the last two hours of conversation. Um, so, so thank you, everyone, for being part of this uh, and for committing yourself uh, to get involved in some case research and teaching. Uh, and as we heard from Medina, some excellent opportunities to develop our doctoral and early career and even mid-career work uh, around case research. At the end of the day, we have to start. No case is written until we sit down, we open our laptops, and we start writing. So the startup case template that I shared earlier is one way to approach that, but it's not the only way to approach that. At the end of the day, uh, what I hope we're able to do tonight, today, is that you start writing a case. Just start. Write one paragraph. Think about the company. Think about the protagonist, the character. Think about the decision or dilemma. And think about what you might want to teach through that case. That's it. That's all we need to do today. And if we put those few sentences together, write that paragraph, uh, and then sleep on it, and then think about how we add to tomorrow. Think about building on that case. And when you feel you have a page or so of ideas already developed, send it. Send it to your colleagues that are on this call. Work with others. Uh, and get some initial feedback. It takes only 15, 20 minutes to think about someone else's work and give them some good quality feedback. That's step one, and that's the opportunity now, today, this week. Uh, that's where it starts. That's where it started for me 15 years ago, where I was a young faculty member in South Africa in an emerging market context, not too dissimilar from yours. Uh, and a senior faculty member came into my office and said, hey, you teach cases in the classroom. Isn't that fun? Uh, we don't have enough cases about Africa. Let's write some cases. And together we just started. Yeah. And, and that's where it develops. You, you've got to take that first step. I think the conversations today are excellent. The guidance you've been given is, is first class. But it means nothing <laughs> unless you start. And the best time is today. The best time is tonight. So I, I've been you know, very pleased to be part of this. Um, I'm, I've shared some resources and I'm very happy to share more. Uh, I, I posted onto the chat quickly, Anjan, for everyone. 
uh, two upcoming NACRA sessions. We have a NACRA Connections session on February 26, where one of our board members will be online to answer any question you may have or just to connect and learn more about the community. That happens on February 26. And then the Case Research Journal is hosting a panel discussion with or a session with the author of one of the winning cases, the top cases globally out of the Case Research Journal, and that's on March 8th, and I've put the link there for you as well. So there are so many resources, so many opportunities to connect, to learn more, uh, but most importantly, to do. And as Nike says, just do it. So let's just do it, and I look forward to seeing the words and ideas that you develop over the next few hours. Thank you so much, Michael. And Michael, as you are the leader, and uh, as Dilbar has also said, I think we have just one thing to do right now, not to close the laptop, get our food close to the laptop and start writing. With that, from my side, I thank each of you, every one of you that you have spent uh, this time with us and let's start writing. That's all. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much. When Anjan first told me that, um, you know, it's likely that we're getting support from NACRA, I couldn't even believe that today we'll meet uh, and we'll discuss our future together. Thank you indeed. It's been so thank you generous so much. of you. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, really? very happy, very excited. Let's, uh, let's just do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.